Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you the cards I'm about to submit to PSA. Um, hopefully this will give you some ideas for what to buy and how to make some money with grading and flipping cards. So just as an introduction, um, I like to buy raw cards, get them graded, and then sell them once they're slabbed. So if you find value in this video or any other videos, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for more grading related videos in the future. Um, I also just did a video of a recent PSA return that I got, so feel free to check that out after. Um, so today I'll be showing you the cards, these cards that I'm about to submit um, to PSA. And I'll also show you the rejects, the reject cards, and I'll explain, I'll go through each one and explain why I am not sending it to PSA. Hopefully that helps give you some insight on what to grade, what not to grade. Um, so we can go ahead and jump into these cards. So first we have this Steph Curry Select um, jersey card. Numbered out of 99. So I'm fully expecting to get a 9 on this. Hopefully not lower than a 9, but should be profitable even in a 9. Um, with a lot of these lower numbered jerseys and autos, you can still make money um, on a 9. Quite a bit of money if it's just slabbed up. Um, so here we have a Patrick Mahomes out of 199 um, really clean hopefully that does well I've got a couple um, silver die cuts from select last year um, I know the die cuts don't grade super well <clears throat> but my philosophy is um, if you're gonna take risks with cards it's nice to do it in multiples because then it gives the grader a chance to compare and maybe you know give one of them a 10, the other one gets a nine, but you're still making money. A 10 can often cover multiple nines, so that's kind of my theory with that. Here's a nice Patrick Mahomes from Select as well. This is out of 149, um, so I'm hoping that does well. In general, when buying from eBay, which is where I buy all my cards, about 30% of them that you buy are probably not gonna be gradable, and that's okay. That's totally fine. Um, I would just say do your best to check centering and corners when buying on eBay. That helps weed out um, most of the auctions that are not gradable. Um, check the surface as best as you can, but with, with scans, you often can't check it very well. So here's another die cut. Um, this one's the club level. So we'll see how that one goes. Wanted to get some Patrick Mahomes. Here's just a silver, um, premier silver, non die cut. Then obviously once you get the cards, um, you'll want to check the centering and corners up close and then use a light to check the surface. I just use my phone light. Um, I use this centering tool, which you can get just off Amazon or anywhere. I use this to check the centering. Um, you want to make sure they're 60 40 or better. That's both right to left and top to bottom. <clears throat> with stuff like this, the mosaic ones, I don't really check the centering. It's sometimes, with depending on the set, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but I haven't had a problem with with a lot of those sets. So, as you can see, I'm buying mostly football right now. Um, just because it's cheap right now, but I anticipate that as we get into the summer and closer to kickoff, people are going to be buying more football, especially quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence is a big one. I've been targeting Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields mainly. Um in what I've been buying. So far it's paid off. I had quite a few of those come back in my last order that you can watch. <clears throat> um, 
so as you can see, a lot of these cards, it's it's nothing too crazy. Um, I generally like to buy cards in like the ten to thirty dollar range raw, um, and then check what they're selling for as a PSA ten, and if they're anywhere from you know sixty to a hundred fifty plus. I think that's a good sweet spot um, for several reasons. I think um, that's a good margin. I'm happy with that margin. And also there's less competition, I feel like, at this, at this price point, especially the lower down you go because people don't find it worth it to... Um, grade cheaper cards it's just a waste of time and, and money even if they come back at 10 but my threshold is um, $10 profit on average per card that I submit to PSA um, and if you're willing to take that margin of course I'd like to be more like 15 or 20 but if you're willing to take 10 it opens up a lot more doors for you to get a lot more different cards um, like there's some in this order, obviously the, the Mahomes, like these, these silver die cuts and the silver premier, these are probably, those were probably like $7 cards or something. So nothing crazy, not trying to hit home runs on everything, but, um, it'll be solid margins if, if some of them grade tens. I still have been buying a little bit of baseball, Otani and Judge mainly, um, Here's another example. This was like an $8 card raw and it sells for about 60 as a PSA 10, 50 or 60. So, you know, if I'm into it for 25 or 30 bucks, you know, that's still doubling your money if it comes back at 10. So I'm, I'll take that all day long. Um, a little bit of basketball in here too. Wanted to kind of roll the dice. This one's out of 99 here. I found that Select is pretty clean, this last year's Select. Um, as well as, well, Mosaic generally is. I'll show you a few Mosaic cards that I rejected that have some problems. LeBron out of 199. This is another card that's, you know, a $10 card or so. But get it graded, get it to the right collector and They'll be willing to pay 60 bucks for it. Here's one here, a nice um, out of 49, Steph from Contenders. And then just a couple Aaron Judge rookies. Um, found these at a good deal together. They're both really clean, so I'm hoping that those grayed out well. So now we'll go ahead and go through these rejects really quick. Like I said, about 30%, for me anyway, it's about 30% that tend to be rejects. So I have 22 cards over here that I'm submitting. I think I have eight here. So that's roughly 30%. Um, some of these issues are gonna be hard to show on the camera, but I'll at least describe them just to help people know what to look for. So with this one here, it looked really clean at first, but there's a couple minor scratches down in this area here. I don't know if you can see them or not, but that's when a light helps. Um, I don't have any magnification or anything. I probably should get something like that. I'm sure it would be helpful, but I found that my phone light picks up a lot of surface issues, so that's sufficient for me for now. Um, with this one here, again, I was really, um, it looked really clean. I was hoping to submit it, but then I checked the back, and there's um, a big scratch down the middle. I don't know if it's a roller mark or something. Going back down there. So that's a, uh, 
a reminder to always look at the back as well. They don't judge the back as harshly, but for something like that, it'll bump down the grade. I've been burned several times um, by not looking as, as hard at the back as I should have. With this green, there's roller marks across, across here. It's hard to see, but there's also a dent on the back right there. So definitely don't want to submit that. And I'm willing to take risks every order. I think it's good to risk it a little bit, especially if you've been getting really high gem rates. My last few gem rates have been 70 to 90%. So I'm happy to take risks. Um, but there's some things that you just don't want to mess with. Um, so yeah, with this one, I think there was, yeah, there's some roller marks across the, the side here. So, yeah, don't think that would gem. And every grader's different, so it's hard to say for sure, but sometimes it's just not worth the risk. Um, yeah, this one has some pretty, pretty bad roller marks. Again, it's, it's tough to see them. I think you might be able to see him a little bit, just arcing right there. So I'm not gonna submit that. This one here, pretty easy to spot. There's um, scratching up in that top area there. I was frustrated that I didn't catch that in the eBay photos, but you know, it happens. You try your best and sometimes Things slip by, that's all good. Um, and then just a couple more here. Yeah, this one had some scratches up in this area up here. I don't, it's hard to see them. They're pretty, pretty obvious looking at them in person. Um, so yeah, not worth it. And this Otani here, last one, has a scratch down here on, to the right of the name. So anyway, scratches and, and surface issues, roller marks, things like that, that's what generally will disqualify a card for me. Um, there's a couple in here that have some dimples, like just like a factory dimples type of thing. Um, like a lot of these, you can, some of the select ones, the die cuts have some dimples, but I'm willing to take the risk on that. Um, some of them will probably get nines and if I get a tough grader, I might get burned, but historically I've done okay on, uh, stuff with, with surface dimples. It's mainly the scratches that will, uh, really bring the, the grade down. Um, so yeah, just to finish off, um, my philosophy is you don't need to submit everything you buy. Um, just do your best to weed out cards on eBay, um, but you can't see everything. Don't be afraid to hold cards back from submitting and just resell them raw. Even if you take a little bit of a loss um, reselling them raw, it's better to take that loss now than to Put more money and time into them and then take a loss later if the grade comes back lower. Um, but yeah, again, that being said, I like to take a couple risks per order. So um, yeah, I'm taking risks with this order kind of with the with the die cuts. I uh, haven't really done those before. So we'll see how those grade out. But um, yeah, that's about it for today's video. I'll be submitting these and as soon as I get this order back, I will link the reveal in the description. And um, stay tuned for more PSA videos. I'll be doing financial reviews from previous orders and uh, um, just other videos in terms of my strategy and how I like to buy stuff. So 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the video if it was helpful, and we'll see you next time.